Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can filter items in a SharePoint online list. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials that I publish. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you a few different ways that you can filter a SharePoint online list. And I'm also going to show you how you can filter a SharePoint online list when working in the modern SharePoint online experience, which is what you can see here on the screen, and when working with the classic SharePoint online experience. Now, the first way that you can filter a SharePoint online list is by using what is called the quick sort. Now, essentially what the quick sort is, is it allows you to filter right from the list simply by clicking on the dropdown to the right of the column name that you want to filter. So for example, if I hover my cursor over this dropdown arrow to the right of invoice number, you're going to see this option that says filter by. If I click on that, this is going to bring up a filter pane that is specific to that column that I selected. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and drill down or filter this list to only show invoice number five, I would put a check mark on number five and go ahead and click apply. And you're going to see now that my list has been filtered. Now, if I wanted to remove this filter, there's a few different ways that I could do that. I could click back into the column that I had filtered on and I can click on the filter by option and I can click on the clear all button. Next, I would click on apply and you can see here that the filter has been removed. Next, what I'll do is I'll show you how you can filter on a different column with a different data type, and then I'll show you an alternative way to clear your filter. Now, for example, if I wanted to filter on my status column, again, using the quick sort method, I could click on the drop down to the right of the column header, and I could click on the filter by button. And here I could easily just put a check in the option that I want to filter by. So if I wanted to filter this list to only show those invoices that are in the status pending approval, I could select that option and click apply. And that's going to go ahead and filter my list to only those items with the corresponding status. Now, a quicker way to clear the filters on your SharePoint list, whether you're using the quick sort method or whether you're gonna be using the additional filter option that I'll show you is to go ahead and actually click on the filter pane at the very top of the SharePoint interface. Now this is an even quicker and more effective way to filter your list, but before I speak about it, if you wanted to just quickly clear any filters that have been applied uh, using any of the methods, you could just go ahead and click on this clear filters button and it's automatically going to clear the filters that have been applied. Now the filter pane is a shortcut that allows you to quickly filter by some of the columns in your SharePoint list. Now if you quickly scan down the list here of available filters in this menu, what you're going to notice is that not all of the columns are displayed, but rather only a subset of columns are displayed. So again, this is like a smart filter that's just meant to make filtering by specific data types, such as individuals or person types, uh, choice types, you know, integer types and dates, easily accessible in one place so you can quickly drill down into the specific subset of the data in your SharePoint list. Now, in order to apply filters, from the filter pane, all you really need to do is go ahead and select the options that you want to filter by. So for example, if I wanted to display only those invoices where the requester was me, I could just check myself. And you're going to see here that this list updates in real time. Now what's handy about this is that the actual filter pane didn't disappear. So again, I can continue to apply or layer on multiple filter criteria. So now if I wanted to go ahead and add another condition to say, only show me those invoices where the requester is me and the status is approved, I can go ahead and select approve. And again, you're going to see that the list has now been updated. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly scroll down. And what this filter pane does is for columns with a data type of date time, you can see here that it makes it easy for you to just apply date filters by dragging this date handle. So I can easily just drag this and it's going to update the parameters and you can see that the actual list again is updating in real time. Now, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and select specific dates, I could just check that option and it's going to allow me to select a specific date value from the list of values that appear in that column in my SharePoint list. Now I'll just go ahead and click clear all and I'll click apply. Now again, if you want to remove your filters quickly, all you need to do is scroll to the very top of the filter pane and click on the clear filters button and it's automatically going to remove all of the filters that have been applied. Now if you want to exit out of the filter pane, you just want to go ahead and click the X here and you are going to now minimize that pane. Again, if you want to access the filter pane to apply some quick filters, you just want to go ahead and click on that filter button at the very top of your SharePoint list. All right, now next I'm going to show you how to filter a SharePoint online list by applying filters at a view level. Now a view is essentially an arrangement of your data. So when you're creating a view, you can actually determine which columns you want to appear, the order in which you want those columns to be displayed, uh, any sorting conditions, filter conditions, or grouping conditions. Now to create or edit a view, what you want to do is you want to scroll to the very top where it says all items and you want to click on the drop down, which is the switch view options button. And you want to scroll down and click on edit current view. This is going to bring you into the customize view menu. And if you scroll to the bottom of this page, what you're going to see here is this filter group. So this is where you can actually come to apply multiple filter conditions and even use expressions um, to help you filter your list. And we're gonna look at some examples of this in a second. All right, now to apply filters with conditions when editing or creating views, what you want to do is you want to check this option here that says show items only when the following is true. Now, under this text that reads show the items when column, you want to go ahead and click on this drop down and this is where you can actually come to select the columns that you want to filter by. Now, for example, if I wanted to implement a filter condition that said show me only those items where the invoice date is something, I would select my invoice date column in the column to filter field and the next thing to do would be to go ahead and select my operator or my conditions. Now, when I click on this dropdown, you can see here, I can actually build some conditions or expressions, uh, is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than, is less than, etc. Now you can even use contains and you can search for partial strings, for example, if that's something you were trying to implement in a filter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and select is greater than, and in this last option, this is where you can actually come to specify the specific filter criteria. Now, if I wanted to actually input a date value, I could do that. I would just need to ensure that it complies with the SharePoint date format. Now, what's also cool is you can even use expressions like today. So if I wanted to just automatically implement a filter that will always show invoices where the invoice date is greater than or less than today, I could go ahead and enter that expression. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly scroll to the bottom and click OK to save this view and implement the filter. And what you're going to see now is that the list has actually been reduced to only two items. And you'll notice that both of these items have an invoice date that is greater than today. Okay, now again, to get back into your filter, you wanna click on the all items drop down, and you wanna click on edit current view and you want to scroll down to the filter group. Now, if I wanted to remove a filter that I've implemented at a view level, all I need to do is select the column to filter on and put it back to none. And I can go ahead and click okay and that's going to actually save 
this filter. Now, what's really cool about working in this view is as I mentioned, you can actually implement filters with these kinds of conditions. You can use formulas if you need to, and you can actually layer on multiple conditions. So you'll see by default, when you're editing the view, you're going to automatically have these two filter options. So show the items when column is something, and then I can choose and or as my operator, and I can go ahead and build a second filter condition if I wanted to. Now, if I wanted to continue to add on conditions, all I need to do is go ahead and click show more columns, and that's going to again, allow me to continue layering on filter conditions. Now you'll see if I click this again, it's going to allow me to add another set of conditions. Now, what I'll do quickly is I'll go ahead and I'm gonna apply some filters here just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and say, show me items when the customer first name contains. And I'm going to enter A here. So my first condition is where the customer's first name contains the letter A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a secondary condition and I'm going to change this to end. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my amount column and I'm going to change the operator to is less than 400. So I'm gonna enter 400. And I'm now going to add a third condition and I'm going to click on show more columns to allow me to do that. And I'm gonna change this to end. And this time what I'm going to do is I am going to select my invoice year column and I'm going to leave this operator to is equal to and I'm gonna go ahead and type in the value 2021. So I'm going to apply three filters to this list. The first filter is where the customer name contains the letter A and where the invoice amount is less than $400 and where the invoice year column is equal to 2021. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom of this page and click OK. And you can see here that based on those filters, my list is now displaying two items. So let's quickly scan the filter conditions. So the first one was where the customer first name column contains the letter A. Carol and Alex both contain the letter A. The second filter condition was where the amount is less than $400. And you can see here, these two items satisfy that condition. And the third one was where the invoice year is equal to 2021. And again, you can see here that those conditions have satisfied to true for these two items and that's why they're displayed. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and clear these filters, again, I can click on the all items drop down, and I can click edit current view. And I'm gonna scroll down to the filter group and all I need to do is change the columns to none and scroll to the bottom and click okay. And that's going to remove the filters from the view. So that's how to apply multiple filters, including conditions in a SharePoint list by modifying or creating a view. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to filter a SharePoint list using the same methods, but when working in the SharePoint Online Classic experience. All right, now you can see here that I have switched into the classic SharePoint experience and essentially this just makes your SharePoint interface look like older versions of SharePoint. You can see here that I'm still working in the same invoices list. Now, when you're working in this experience, if you want to filter your list using the quick sort, the method is exactly the same. It just looks a little bit different. So to apply filters to this list using the quick sort, all you need to do again is scroll to the very top and hover your cursor on the column that you want to apply a filter on. So you can see here when I hover over status, it's highlighted blue and you can see there's this drop down. If I go ahead and click on this drop down, you'll notice that it allows me again to apply a filter based on the values that appear in this column. So if I want to filter this list to show only those items that are pending approval, I can go ahead and check it and click close and you can see here that the list is going to update based on my filter. 
Now, if I wanna remove this again, I can click on the list that I have the filter applied and I can go ahead and click clear filters from status. So generally the same approach, it just looks a little bit different. Now, you'll also notice that there is no filter pane like we saw in the new SharePoint experience or the modern SharePoint experience. So the only ways that you can filter lists when you're working in this experience is to use the quick sort method, which we just looked at, or to go back to actually modify or edit your view. And to get into that page, what you want to do is scroll over to these three dots and you want to click on them. And here you can see you can either modify this view or create a new one. Clicking either is going to bring you back into that view page that we just looked at. Here it is. And when you scroll down, you're going to see the same filter group that we just looked at where we were able to build out our filter conditions uh, and add multiple conditions as we saw fit. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how you can apply filters to a SharePoint online list. I'm curious to hear from you. Did you find this helpful? Do you have questions? Do you have ideas or tips on how you apply filters to your SharePoint online lists? If you do, please drop the comments below so that other people can actually hear from you and learn from your experience. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up. And most importantly, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabellis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.